Seattle. Firstly, we do apologize for the delay. Um, we did experience some uh, unforeseen circumstances, but alhamdulillah, um, all is well, and uh, we'll now uh, proceed, inshallah. Um, so firstly, just before we begin, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time at all um, before I pass on to Sheikh, but just a, sh a brief introduction to IUS, so the Islamic Unity Society. Uh, we're a registered charity based here uh, in the UK. Uh, we were established in 1995, which is, uh, makes this year our 25th anniversary. Um, and Alhamdulillah, um, we're entirely run by volunteers. We're an independent organization and um, our uh, chapters in London and Manchester uh, run typically face-to-face -face events, but obviously due to current uh, circumstances, we're doing uh, online events. Um, the Imam Hussein blood donation campaign is also uh, a sub-part of IUS, and the IHBDC is the largest Muslim blood donation campaign in the UK, alhamdulillah. And part of IUS is also IUS Aid, uh, which is a humanitarian uh, charity that raises money for humanitarian uh, means in places like Pakistan, Yemen, and Iraq. And um, obviously, just an introduction to, to this uh, two-part series that, inshallah, we'll be running with Sheikh Shumali. Um, we will be, inshallah, looking at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, uh, which says, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Why is there such a large emphasis on seeking knowledge in Islam? Uh, what are the best sources for knowledge? And also, how can we go about implementing this knowledge in our daily lives? Uh, inshallah, this session will proceed as follows. So Sheikh will uh, deliver a talk uh, on the topic and we'll then open the floor to questions. And I've already seen that uh, most of you are well acquainted with the chat feature, alhamdulillah. And um, so that's uh, mainly how questions will be asked. If you just type them out, inshallah, I will relay them to Sheikh. Uh, if you would rather um, unmute your mic and ask, you can do that. You'll just have to um, make a request to unmute your mic and inshallah the host will uh, unmute you so that you can ask your question. Inshallah we will uh, aim to finish, well we will inshallah finish uh, before Maghrib. Um, and um, just before I provide an introduction to Sheikh Shomali, um, IUS are also running a, actually a six-part series over the course of three weekends which started last weekend, um, so only a few days ago, with Sayyid Hassan al Sadr. Um, the topics are twofold. Firstly, uh, rational proof for the existence of God. And secondly, uh, proving the status of the Ahlul Bayt salam, through the Holy Quran. These are also taking place on Zoom. So it's uh, Saturday, Sunday, um, next weekend and the weekend after at 5 p.m. If you go on our website and social media platforms, you'll be able to retrieve the link to join. And the previous two sessions, which alhamdulillah were really, really fascinating, uh, took place, as I said, last Saturday and Sunday. And those are accessible on the IUS national YouTube channel, inshallah. So just a brief introduction to Sheikh Shomali. I mean, I'm sure you're all aware of him. He really doesn't need any introduction. But in case some of you maybe don't know about his credentials, uh, Sheikh Dr. Muhammad Ali Shomali is the graduate of the Islamic seminaries of Qom Iran. After completing his BA and MA degrees in Western philosophy at the University of Tehran, he earned his doctorate in philosophy from the University of Manchester. He's currently the founding director of both the International Institute for Islamic Studies and the Rasalat International Institute. His publications include Ethical Relativism, an analysis of the foundations of morality, self-knowledge, discovering Shia Islam, self-development, lessons on Islamic beliefs, unity of God and unity in God, lessons on Islamic morals, and lessons on imama and wilaya. And he also has a new book, I'm uh, proud to say, uh, that's releasing this week, entitled Lessons on Knowing the Quran. Sheikh is also the co-editor of six volumes on Catholic Shia dialogue, as well as Faith and Modernity, a Muslim Christian Conversation. Dr. Uh, Sheikh Shumali is also the editor-in-chief of Message of Thaqalain, a quarterly journal of Islamic studies. And that was a real mouthful. And as you can tell, mashallah, in his time, Sheikh has given so much to the community. Um, he's opened a number of different institutes, which he leads. He delivers a number of lectures and he's, mashallah, published um, more books than I can actually count right now. So we have no better uh, individual uh, or scholar to be leading this series on seeking knowledge uh, in Islam. So without further ado, inshallah, I will uh, hand over to uh, Sheikh, Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali, uh, please welcome him with a salawat uh, in your homes. Ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I should apologize for uh, being late. I'm very sorry, and I'm not right now in my home, so I, I'm very sorry. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah ladhi al-azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف. First, I would like to congratulate you for the arrival of the months of the Qada and the birth of Lady Fatima al-Masuma سلام الله عليها. The first of the Qada is the day that the birth of Lady Masuma is celebrated, and later. On the 11th of the Al-Qa'da, we have the birth of Imam Raza alayhi salam. So these two children of Imam Qadim alayhi salam, uh, we both, you know, celebrate both their birthdays, you know, in this month. And also the month of the Al-Qa'da is when Prophet Musa ala nabina wa alayhi salam started his uh, time of uh, meditation and reflection and being in the appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you know, Allah says, وَوَعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرَةً So it was for the 30 days in the month of the Al-Qa'da and then it was extended another 10 days so became 40 days. So the month of the Hajjah was also included for the first 10 days of the month of the Hajjah. And this is why in the month of the Hajjah between Salatul Maghrib and Isha, we say to Raka prayer and we recite this ayah. And continues. So we are in a very blessed time. Uh, many ulama used to keep these 40 days uh, starting from today as a special practice of Arba'in, Chalil Nishini. So I hope, inshallah, we can all benefit from these uh, blessed days and nights of months of the Qada and the first 10 nights of the Hajjah, inshallah. Our topic is a topic which is very dear to me. And as soon as I heard this topic, uh, then I welcomed the uh, topic. And that is about the merits of knowledge and learning in Islam, the role they play in our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we had tawfiq some years back to have uh, 43 uh, sessions on uh, Muniyatul Murid, the hadith and verses of the Quran about knowledge and some of the manners. So these are available online, 43 lectures. Plus uh, we had uh, two, three times series on Islamic theory of education, which are available. And inshallah, bi'iznillah, the book on Muniyatul Murid, uh, based on those reflections are also inshallah coming soon. So I just want to give you a little uh, you know, taste of this discussion today and inshallah next week, but please go and reflect on these hadith and beautiful uh, eye-opening hadith that we have about knowledge, about ilm, about ulama, about muta'allameen, seekers of knowledge. And as you are already familiar, one of the best sources that we have is Munyatul Murid Fi Adabil Mufid Wal Mustafid by the late Shahid Thani. Some time ago, some years back, I was reading that actually Shahid Thani, when he went to Sham 
at that time, you know, like Syria, Lebanon, that area, uh, and wanted to teach. And of course, as you know, people over there, the majority were not the Shia, but uh, he had lots of good contacts with uh, Sunni uh, scholars. He had uh, permission of narrating hadith of Sunni sources from great Sunni scholars. Uh, so in order to be granted license to teach, they ask him to present something like a kind of, you know, dissertation or thesis. And he compiled this book for that purpose. Uh, so it's a very organized and a scholarly book. And he mentions hadith from Sunni sources and from Shia sources. If you go to the introduction of the book by the author, then you have few chapters. The first chapter is Fi Fadl al Ilm Min al Quran. Alhamdulillah, this book is also translated into English and published by the Islamic College. So if you want the English translation, also you can find it. Arabic translation is online, Farsi translation is online. Uh, English translation is not online, but you can find the hard copy. So when you go to the introduction by the author, you have few chapters. I just give you the name of the chapters and then reflect on some hadith. The first chapter is Fi Fadl al Ilm Min al Quran, the merits of knowledge based on the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has very highly regarded knowledge and praised the people of knowledge and learning to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Hal ya'lamun, la ya'lamun. are those who know and those who don't know the same or min ulama. among the servants of Allah the people who have real khashya of Allah who understand the greatness of Allah and therefore in their heart, they feel owed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are ulama. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra' rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil qalam. Read or recite in the name of your most honored Lord. Why he is the most honored Lord? Alladhi allama bil qalam. Because he taught how to use the pen, or he taught with the pen, meaning perhaps that how to use the pen. And this is why in Surah Ar-Rahman, Ta'alim is brought even before creation. Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan. Although, if you wanted to go by chronological order, we should say Ar-Rahman, Khalaq al-Insan, then Allama al-Quran. But because Ta'alim is so important, that Allah says, Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan, Allama al-Bayan. He taught the Quran, he created mankind, and he taught uh, human beings how to express themselves. Expression is very important, communication is very important. Or we have surah which starts with Qalam. Uh, Surat Qalam the pen. Noon wal qalam wa ma yastur. Can you imagine in a society which suffered ignorance, in a society that the, the number of people who were able to read and write was so low that could be just like fingers of one person. And if they knew anything was well, all oral. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by pen. Noon wal qalam wa ma yastur. So there are lots of things from the Quran itself in this chapter. The next chapter is Faslun fi ma ruvya an al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi fi fadl al ilm. A chapter about merits of knowledge, hadith about merits of knowledge from the Prophet, but from Sunni sources, Tariq al-Am. Third chapter is 
fi ma ruwiya an tariq al khassah fi fadl al ilm what has been mentioned by shia from the prophet about merits of knowledge then there is a chapter it's all about the hadith from tafsir imam asana askari alayhi salam you know there is a book of tafsir which is attributed to imam hasan askari alayhi salam and there are hadith there about knowledge that shahid asani brings here then he has a chapter about uh, wise ideas and quotations from previous scriptures or thinkers about knowledge and then he talks about aql and intellectual uh, understanding and evaluation of knowledge what i would like to share with you is just some hadith from chapter 3 of introduction of shahid thani to muniyatul murid which is uh, about the hadith from Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam from Shia sources about knowledge. The first hadith here is what con is considered by Shahid Sani as authentic hadith. Ma ruvinahu bil isnad sahih. It is uh, authentic chain of narration and it is going back to Imam Raza alayhi salam ila Abil Hassan Ali ibn Musa Raza alayhi salam an abahi Imam Raza alayhi salam quotes this hadith from his fathers means from Imam Qadim and Imam Qadim from Imam Sadiq Imam Sadiq from Imam Baqir up to Rasulullah an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so it goes to Amir al Mumunin, Amir al Mumunin from the Prophet. And Nahu Qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The beginning of this hadith is very famous. Everyone, I think, has heard it. But maybe the remaining of the hadith is not that much heard. Rasulullah said, according to this hadith, Talabul ilme faridatun ala kull muslim. In a society, as I said, knowledge was not important, literature was not important. Rasulullah introduces a radical shift. Rasulullah says, not only seeking knowledge is important, indeed seeking knowledge is faridatun ala kulli muslim. It's a religious duty. You know, sometimes we say to people that, you know, there is no problem in learning. Sometimes you say, no, you should learn. In this world today, without knowledge, you cannot succeed. What to say that not only you should learn, but as a requirement of your faith, as an obligation, it's a faridah, like salat, which is a faridah. Fasting is faridah. Talabul ilm is also faridah. Seeking knowledge is a faridah, is an obligation, and it is for all Muslims. Young, old, middle age doesn't make difference. Men, women, children, I don't know, black, white, yellow, doesn't make any difference. Every Muslim must seek knowledge. What type of knowledge in Islamic theory of education? We have discussed this, but briefly, I can say any knowledge that can make you a better person, can make you a better version of yourself, any knowledge that can make you a better servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a more virtuous person, that is something that we all need to learn. Then we have other types of knowledge and other types of disciplines that we need to make sure that we have enough people to take care of them. They are wajib kifai. We need to have some people who are doctors, some people who are engineers, some people who are artists, some people who are 
I don't know, drivers, some people who are shopkeepers. We need all different uh, kinds of uh, useful and be beneficial uh, occupations. But when it comes to what makes us better people, better servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a responsibility for all of us. Kull Muslim. And nothing can stop it. Age cannot stop it. Distance cannot stop it, even if you have to go up to China. Even risks and dangers cannot stop you. Utlubul ilm walu bisafkil muhaj. Sorry, walu bihawdil bisafkil muhaj wa hawdil lujaj. Seek knowledge even if your blood of head might be shed or blood of heart might be shed. Even if you have to go to oceans and there are you know, dangerous waves of water, this would not stop you and should not stop you. So every Muslim must be a seeker of knowledge. We don't say, please listen very carefully. We don't say you have to become alim. If you can, you must, or at least it's better. But what is obligation is seeking knowledge. And you understand the difference. Maybe my age, my memory, my learning you know, capacity are not helping me to become alim. Maybe I am, I'm starting very late or I don't know, maybe I don't have you know, that much of background. Maybe I have very busy life. Maybe I have difficult, you know, hectic life. Maybe I don't become alim, okay. It's not an obligation that everyone becomes an alim. But seeking knowledge is an obligation. As much as you can, you must be always learning. It can be two hours a day. It can be one hour a day. At least half an hour a day. Of course, I believe that people of our age, they should make sure that as average every day, they allocate one hour to learning, to discussing, to taking notes, to reviewing, at least one hour per day, which means less than 5% of your day. So you have to make sure that you at least allocate this much. So it means per week, seven hours. So that you can say, I am seeking knowledge. I am fulfilling my wajib. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something which is very, very important. And that is about where should I seek knowledge? What is the proper context for seeking knowledge? Shall I read every book that becomes available? Shall I listen to every lecture that becomes available? Shall I go to every a speaker who speaks, or I have to be selective in the way that for your food of body, you have to be careful and you cannot take risk with your physical health. You cannot also take risk with your spiritual health, with your intellectual health. I don't know how much you are going to uh, relate to what I want to say now. I hope, inshallah, you have had experiences to help you and uh, to understand enough this point. Believe me, sometimes one speaker, either directly or indirectly, consciously or unconsciously, may put a virus in your mind. And after listening to that person, if you are not a person of discerning, if you are not a person who is already qualified, that virus can affect your balanced understanding, can affect your balanced practices. And sometimes you don't know, even you don't notice you have been affected. Maybe someone makes a seed of despair in you. Maybe someone puts a virus of 
becoming hopeless or a virus of, I don't know, becoming suspicious about everyone and every institution. Or maybe someone puts in you false hope so that you don't do anything and you say, okay, just, you know, for example, my love, you know, for Ahlul Bayt is going to save me. I don't need to bother about my actions, for example. One virus can affect you for your entire life. Physical health is very important, but the good thing is that most of the time, when your health is in danger, you have some symptoms. There is pain, there is fever, there are changes in your diet, you lose your appetite, you know, you become pale, you become weak. So these symptoms help to realize that you are not normal, you are affected. But in the spiritual and intellectual health and illness, it's not easy to understand that you have been affected. Either you don't notice the difference, or even if you notice that there are issues, but you don't realize that where they come from. For example, you feel very depressed, but you don't know this was for a problem in the way you understand yourself or you understand your religion, for example, or your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah says, فَتْلُبُ الْعِلْمَا فِي مَظَانِّهِ وَقْتَبِسُوهُ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ Seek knowledge in its proper places and take it from its people. You cannot take knowledge from black market. You cannot take knowledge from any source. Say, oh, this website looks very nice, must be, you know, something authentic. This book is printed, you know, very nice. You know, some people think if something is just printed, it's a hodja. Who is the author of this book? The authenticity is very important. This speaker, how much credentials he or she has, especially who have trained him, who accept responsibility for him. You know, sometimes in the Jose, I used to say, in Islamic tradition of education, in the same way that a child is known through his father and mother and grandfather, a child without knowing who are his parents or her parents, is under question mark. We are not saying he is not legitimate, but it's under question mark, unless we know who is the father, who is the mother, you know, to which family this child belongs. A scholar also without knowing his teachers and the place that he has studied, the place that has verified his qualities and qualifications, there is a question mark. I'm not saying that it's not qualified, but there is a question mark. You have to be very careful. Rasulullah says, seek knowledge in its proper places and take it from its people, people of knowledge. Who are people of knowledge? Question. Who are people of knowledge? Ahlul ilm. Who are they? I think Ahlul ilm means that people who have prioritized learning and teaching over other things in their life. People that have spent their adult life in learning and teaching and discussing and writing. These are Ahlul ilm. People that you don't find others more closer to knowledge than them. Otherwise, they would be considered as Ahlul Ilm. People who have dedicated their life to learning. So this is Ahlul Ilm. Rasulullah says, take knowledge from them. In the same way that Allah says, Fas'alu Ahlul Dhikr. 
in Kuntum La Ta'alamun, ask the people of Dhikr, the people of remembrance and reminder. And Imam Raza salam said, Nahnu Ahlul Dhikr, because Dhikr is Quran and Ahlul Bayt are Ahlul Quran. So we need also to go to Ahlul Ilm. Then Rasulullah said, فَإِنَّ تَعَلُّمَهُ لِلَّهِ حَسَنَةٌ فَإِنَّ تَعَلُّمَهُ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى حَسَنَةٌ وَتَلَبَهُ عِبَادَهُ وَالْمُذَاكَرَةُ بِهِ تَسْبِيحٌ وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ جِحَادٌ وَتَعْلِيمُهُ مَنْ لَا يَعْلَمُهُ صَدَقَةٌ وَبَذْلُهُ لِأَهْلِهِ قُرْبَةٌ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى رسول الله said, learning is hasana, is a righteous deed, learning. But lillah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I shouldn't learn for the sake of getting a job or, you know, for example, people respect me. No, I learn for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this becomes hasana. وَتَلَبَهُ عِبَادَهُ Seeking knowledge is ibadah, is an act of worship. وَالْمُذَاكَرَةُ بِهِ تَسْبِيهُونَ When you discuss, we say, you know, in Hawza, we say, مُبَاحَثَ When you discuss the lesson you have taken with another or two, three other people, this is tasbih, this is considered as glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ جِحَادٌ and if you act upon your knowledge, this is jihad, this is a struggle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if that issue that you are acting upon can be something which is not that difficult. For example, you have learned that you know it's good to do this prayer, it's good to do, I don't know, salat or lay, it's good to give zakat. There can be different things that you have learned, but you should try to implement all the things that you learned. وَتَعَلِّمُهُ مَنْ لَا يَعْلَمُهُ صَدَقَةٌ If you teach knowledge, but you have learned to those who don't know, this is sadaqah. It's an act of charity. وَبَذْلُهُ لَأَحْلِ And if you give it to the people who are suitable for knowledge, they are people who are good learners, qualified learners, because they have sincerity. They want to learn in order to become better. This is qurbatun ila Allah ta'ala. This helps you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, I think I stop here. There are many beautiful hadith here, but I would like to also uh, receive some questions that you might have. And inshallah, next week we are going to continue this discussion. So if there is any question, any comments, any ideas, please put forward. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, thank you very, very much, Sheikhna, for your invited no. talk. Thank you very much. It's lovely to see you again. Thank you very much. Uh, inshallah, as I mentioned, um, whoever has questions, um, you can either, number one, ask it through your mic system. So just require uh, or request, rather, to be unmuted. Um, or if you prefer, you can also ask through the chat and I'll relay them to Sheikh, inshallah. Okay, no one has raised their hand. Assalamu alaikum all. Thank you for taking my question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, ah. Shaykh. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to give us this lecture. Uh, it's very beneficial. Um, <clears throat> I, have, I have a very uh, quick question. Yes. Do you think that in our tradition, it is better to seek knowledge from a person rather than from a book? And in this sense, do you think that much like the way the Sufis approach learning, that we should uh, seek a teacher or a sheikh 
with whom we basically uh, sit with and commit to take their teachings as opposed to reading various books. Thank, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. This is a very good question. Ideally, knowledge should come directly from a source of knowledge, from an alim, from someone who is Ahlul Ilm, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just mentioned. Imam Qadim alayhi salam has a very beautiful expression in hadith of Hisham ibn Hakam, which is in the first volume of Al Kafi. Imam Qadim alayhi salam talks about knowledge, about intellect, lots of beautiful ideas are there. And we had a series on that in the shrine of Lady Masuma, Imam Qazim on intellect. I think there are 11 lectures. One sentence that I would like to mention here is what Imam Qazim said to Hisham. La ilm illa an alim rabbani. There is no knowledge on this. It comes from a godly scholar. Knowledge is not for us some terms, some concepts, some theories. Knowledge is light. Knowledge is insight. Knowledge is proper attitude. And this needs to come from a person who has already achieved this, not only little for himself, but has achieved this so much that can inspire others. You know, sometimes, for example, it's very dark and I have little candle that I can find my way. But sometimes I have so much light that I can project light and many people can benefit. Ali Rabbani is the one who has become a source of light because of implementing what he has learned. So, if you want really to learn and your mind and heart both come along, you need to find godly scholars and learn from them. I use this example sometimes. I say, imagine if you have a candle and you want to ignite this candle, put fire on it, the picture of another candle which is on fire is not going to help. Seeing it in mirror is not enough. Warming the room is not enough. Unless you have a candle with fire and that touches this candle, the second one cannot have fire, cannot start shining. So we need to look for godly scholars. But if we don't have access to them or we are in a very basic level, then start with learning books of godly scholars. Because their books are like nectar of their knowledge, nectar of their wisdom and experiences. The cream of their ideas are normally available in their books. I start with them, with the books, and through them, raise your level, ask Allah to put you in touch with Gandhi scholars, and inshallah, you will find them. Sooner or later, if you are searching and if you are in need, you will find. But you cannot keep everything on hold till you find them. 
you have to start with the books by such scholars. Read the book, ask about the book, discuss the book till you understand and you go to the next book. Thank you. Um, just um, so I'll have to, I'm really sorry, I'll have to politely request um, if inshallah we can keep the questions and the answers just slightly more brief. Yeah. Um, because alhamdulillah, we've got loads and loads of questions in the chat, alhamdulillah, and Maghrib time is, is approaching, so inshallah. Um, so I think this question is very much linked on to what you just said. Um, in fact, you might have already answered it, but the question is, now that the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam are not with us, who are the Ahlul Ilm? Yes. Yes. So as uh, we have many hadiths from Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam even in their presence, they referred the Shia to the people who were familiar with the teachings of Ahlul Bayt We have many, many hadiths about this, that Ahlul Bayt referred Shia to people like Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman. For example, a person asked Imam alayhi salam, Afa Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman thiqatun ahudhu anhu ma'alim adini? And this question shows that it's already established, was already established that they can seek knowledge from such people. So he says, is he a thiqa, is a reliable person that I can take teachings of Islam, my faith from him? And Imam says, yes. Or for example, Imam says, uh, that uh, to Aban ibn Taghlib, you know, sit in the masjid and give fatwa. Or for example, you know, about the Zakariya ibn Adam, he's considered to be a person that can be trusted. Or Amri is a person that can be trusted. So, in their time of presence, and certainly after the Qayba started, occultation started, the second to the level of Ahlul Bayt are ulama who have dedicated their lives to learning the teachings of Ahlul Bayt For us, they act as a kind of media. Media is the plural for medium. And that is something that occurs between you and another thing. So they are filling this gap between us and Ahlul Bayt They are never compared with Ahlul Bayt, but they just connect us to Ahlul Bayt Sometimes with one person between us, sometimes maybe 10 persons between us, but what is important is that any person that occurs between you and the Prophet and Imams must be a person who is reliable. For example, you have Marja, then you have, for example, no access to Marja, but you should have access through a person that is reliable to the Marja. You cannot say any person can connect me to Marja. In the same way that uh, not everyone can become Marja, not every person also can be considered as a reliable link between you and your marja, for example. Sounds, thank you, Sheikh. Yeah. Um, so the next question we have is, um, if you could please repeat the final hadith which you gave, and also to whom, uh, which member of the academy it's attributed to as well, please. Which hadith? Um, the final hadith which you gave about the kind of learning for the, the sake of Allah, seeking knowledge is a form of ibadah. From Munyatul Murid? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Or from Imam Qadim, I don't know. If it's Munyatul Murid, I can read it again. So. Yes, it was the final one which you gave, Sheikh. Yeah. Uh, just before you end this. Yeah. So. Imam Raza alayhi salam from his fathers, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, he said, Talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is an obligation for all, or upon all believers or Muslims. 
فطلب العلم في مظانه واقتبسوه من أهله seek knowledge in its proper places and get it from its people فإن تعلمه لله تعالى حسنا because truly learning for the sake of Allah is hasana is an is a righteous act وطلبه عبادة and seeking knowledge is an act of worship والمذاكرة به تسبيح discussing it is glorification of Allah والعمل به جهاد acting upon it is jihad is struggle for the sake of God وتعليمه من لا يعلمه صدقة teaching it to those who don't know it is an act of charity وبذله لأهله قربة على الله تعالى and give it to the people who are suitable for learning is an uh, is a means uh, for nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sounds beautiful, Heli. Thank you very, very much. Uh, the next, thank you. The next question is, um, as an older learner with a job and other responsibilities, uh, can you give us some tips on how to balance and organize our time? And a second part of the question is also, please tell us how to speed read as it takes me ages uh, from the sister that asked the question. Yes. Nothing is able to stop you if you really want to learn. We have actually cases that people started very late and still they became scholars and they became experts in their own field. I remember even before I joined the Hosea, uh, I was taking some lessons in Tehran from a sheikh in Tehran, some lessons on Arabic, Sarf uh, al-Nahm. And he mentioned this example about Sakaki. I don't know if you have heard the name of Sakaki. Sakak in Arabic is the one who makes knives. So there was a man who was making knives and selling the knives. And he was so good that even the king used to invite him and you know ask him to make you know a special for example knife or maybe even sword for him and the king had respect for him one day this sakaki saw that when he was with the king another person came and the king showed more respect to him than sakaki so he was shocked in who is this person that king loves him even more. And then he was told that he is an alim, he's a scholar. Anyway, Sakaki decided to become an alim. Maybe he thought in this way, he can have something that would make him more honorable in dunya and akhira. But he was old by that time. And he was uh, trying to learn but it was very difficult. His memory was not that sharp. And even, you know, my sheikh in Tehran told me that, uh, you know, sometimes he made a funny, you know, mistake. Uh, if I want to say it takes time. So he was almost on the edge of losing his hope. But when he was outside city and trying to learn and memorize, he saw there is, uh, you know, leakage of water. Water is, you know, dropping from, a, for example, a stone on another stone or on a rock. Just drops of water. But there is a hole now on the rock. So it means that because the, these drops of water constantly used to hit this rock, so they made like a curve inside, on, uh, on the top of, on the surface of the rock. And he told himself this. And I like all of us, you know, repeat this to ourselves. He said, neither my brain <laughs> is harder than this rock, nor knowledge is 
less effective than water. If water by repetition can affect the rock, by repetition, knowledge can also go into my brain. And he became a scholar of Arabic literature and he has a very famous book, Miftah al Ulum by Sakaki, is very famous. And I think he talks about 12 disciplines of Arabic language. Sarf, Naf, Balagha, Aruz, all these kinds of disciplines. So please never feel it's too late. You can always learn, but you have to be steadfast. You have to be persistent. In Hose, we say, harfun takraru alfun. Learn one thing, repeat it 1,000 times. Unfortunately, we learn 1,000, we want to learn 1,000 things. And we don't take notes, we don't repeat, we don't discuss, and none of them remain in our mind. This is not because your memory is not good. This is because your method is not good. You have to repeat, you have to review, you have to discuss, you have to share with other people. And in this way, inshallah, they will settle. And the good point is, the more you use your mind, your mind becomes more and more prepared for learning it's not that you know your mind becomes you know more and more tired no if you start reading discussing reviewing then little by little your mind becomes more and more prepared and becomes younger so it's never late just needs commitment just needs continuity consistent approach Hassan Sheikh thank you very much you're welcome uh, there are loads and loads of other questions which I've saved I think because of the interest of time we'll probably yeah. save those till next week sure. uh, we will maybe next week can have an extended Q&A or something because alhamdulillah there are there are many many questions but in the interest of time um, I think we'll leave it here Thank you so, so much, uh, Sheikh. My Sheikh. pleasure. Thank you. And again, I'm sorry for my delay. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you very much for joining us. Your talk was extremely enlightening. Your yeah. answers to the questions as well. And like I said, there is no better scholar in our community to address uh -huh. the, this uh -huh. uh, pertinent topic. So thank you very, very much. Inshallah, uh, may Allah give you and your family, especially your son, uh, Sheikh Jawad, more tawfiq to continue to serve. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahlul Bayt in this amazing way. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Inshallah, uh, we will see Sheikh uh, yourself and uh, inshallah everyone else next week as well. Um, it will be the same time, uh, so 8 p.m. Uh, over Zoom. Um, the login details are the same, so if you just go through your emails, I, I sent a couple of emails, I believe, with the login details, um, so everyone can inshallah use those to log in. Um, and just to end with just a couple of points. Um, so as I said at the beginning, we have a, a series going alongside this with Said Hassan al Sadr uh, with two topics. Firstly, rational proof for the existence of God. And secondly, proving the status of the Ahlul Bayt through the Holy Quran. Uh, so please do join in those uh, series. So Saturday, the 27th of uh, June is the next one. Uh, over that weekend and the next weekend. So please have a look online on our website and on our social media platforms for details on how to join. And I'll also end, uh, inshallah, asking everyone to please, please do try and donate towards IUS. Um, we're an independent charity, as I said, a registered charity, and we're entirely run by volunteers. And we rely on the donations of our members and our participants to keep us going and to keep uh, providing programs such as these and other events as well throughout the year. So please visit our website. Uh, so the link would be ios.org.uk forward slash donate. It's very, very easy to donate. Whatever you can give, uh, inshallah, would be much appreciated. And also, if you do also wish to volunteer as well, uh, you can send me an email as well. I mean, you've, I think you've all uh, got the email address. Uh, it's london at ios.org.uk. Um, so please send us an email as well if you do wish to volunteer and help us to organize more events as well. So inshallah, uh, we look forward to seeing you, dear Sheikh. Thank uh, you. What else next week uh, as well, inshallah. My pleasure. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.